Welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a shirt without measurement. This is my fabric. It's in the fold of one. And this is a shirt. I love this shirt so much. So I'm going to make a shirt like this. So I won't be using my measurement. I'm going to be using this. Now I'm going to mark round this shirt. Two inches round this shirt. I'm going to mark two inches round the shirt. That's for sewing allowance. So I'm going to mark it with my chalk. Mark it round with my chalk. Don't forget, I'm marking two inches round with my chalk. That's for sewing allowance. Now I'm using an Ankara fabric, which is not stretchy. So I need enough allowance so my shorts don't come out too tight on me. So I'm marking two inches round around the waist line, that waist area where the band is. Because there is a band, I added two, one more inch to it so that it will allow me to get enough space for my waist. This particular shirt I'm going to make, I'm not going to add elastic to it, I'm going to use a zip instead. So I've added enough allowance for my sewing allowance now i've joined the lines i'm going to cut it out I'm going to cut my working area out Now this is my working area. The next thing I'm going to do is, don't forget there will be a slant right there. The next thing I'm going to do is to fold another material, then cut out, this will serve as the front side of the fabric. Now I'm going to fold another material to cut out the back side. So my material is folded. Now I'm going to cut this out. But before then I'm going to add one inch to the waist area, one inch upward. Because of my my boot, because my my has it's big, so to allow space, I'm going to add extra space. But I realized that this space I'm adding, I, I made a mistake. That after sewing, I realized that the allowance I added for the second piece was too much. So when you want to sew yours, make sure you don't add too much allowance to yours. I added allowance because of my big boot, but. I found out that the first piece I cut was enough, had enough allowance for both the back and the front. So I didn't need to add any more allowance to the second fabric. It was supposed to be the same size. That's the fact that I added that to the back. So I was not supposed to add extra allowance to it. So if you're cutting for yours, make sure that you cut the same size of the same size for both the front and the back. And remember, any short of or trouser or anything you're using, make sure you fold out the back side. The back side is usually wider than the front side. So if you're folding the back side of the material, you make sure that the measurement is the same. But if you fold the front side first, make sure that when you want to cut the back side, you add extra allowance, just as I just did. I'm going to run my markings, I run my markings round the allowances that I have cut, then I'm going to cut out my working area. Now I've cut out my working area for the second piece. So this is what I need for my shirt. This is all what I need. The first thing I'm going to do is to join the crotch line. That's the flap. The crotch line is also known as the flap. To join the crotch line of the front. Because I'm not adding that to the front. So I'll join the crotch line of the front first. Then for the back, I'll join the crotch line. Well, before then, I'm going to mark out my dark spot. Before I join the flap, the crotch lines together, the back piece the, the piece for the back side, I'm going to create my dart line on it. So 
Now, I'll measure from the crotch line. Measure 4 inches. 4 inches, then mark. Then add 1 inch to it. That will be my dart. Then from the waistline downward, that's the length of the dart is going to be 4 inches also. You can make yours five. I'll make it five inches because I'm going to bend the. I'm going to be bending my um my waistband. I'm not going to add a waistband to this. I'm going to be bending my waistband. That's why I added one inch extra. So this is it. This is it. So I've done that now. So the cross lines are joined. Now the next thing is to bend my waist my waist area. For the front, I'm going to bend it this way. You fold of two, you see? One, two. That way, then I'm going to sew around. When doing the front side, I have to be careful. Then for the back also, I am going to join the same way, bend the same way. Then before bending the back side, I'm going to join my, I'm going to sew my dart line. Don't forget. Now I've done that. See, this is the front. I did it carefully so that I'll get a fine line. So this is the front. That's the line. You see, it's beautiful, right? Now, for the back side, don't forget the, the front doesn't have um, um, that. There's no that for the front. It's just like that. Then for the back, look at the dots. I already joined the dot lines and I've already bent my waistline too. You see? You see? You see that the dot is now shorter. It's shorter because I've bent my waistline. That's why it's shorter. Okay. Take note of that. You bend your your dart should be four by five, five for the length, then four from the crotch line. So the next thing is to join the sides. Remember I told you I made a mistake with my cotton. The fabric is supposed to be the same, the same size. I mean for the front and the back it's supposed to be the same piece, but I made a mistake. Now I'm going to join the sides. When before sewing I cut um um like one inch allowance away from. The waist to the hip side the first thing to do before joining the side together is to join the the flap area as you see the flap area you join it first then join the sides together so on that you see i've joined the flap and the side together now i left i left some space at the side for my zip now i'm going to insert my zip there but the other side is locked just one side that i left for my zip because i'll be putting my zip by the side but right before putting my zip by the side, I'm going to create a design around the waist with my bias. So this is my bias. I'll place it on the sewn line. That's where the line is, the sewn line on the waist. Then I'm going to run a sew on the tip of the bias, the two tips of the bias. I'm going to run a sew round to the other side. That's before inserting my zip. Now I've done that, you see? It's beautiful, right? See, this is how it will look after you run the sew. You see, it's beautiful, right? I actually love designs. You see, now I run two. I run it at the tips, the tips of the bias twice. I sew on the bias twice. So now I'm going to insert my zip. That's a space for the zip. So I'm going to insert my zip there. So let's do that. Now my my shirt is almost ready. The zip is inserted. Don't forget before inserting your zip, make sure your waistline and make sure that the Allowance you're putting inside won't be too much or too small. It now is to bend the, the hem of the shorts as you wish. Optional, you can bend, you can decide to weave the tip, then do a one bending for the tip of the shot, or you bend twice. But for me, I am going to pipe the tip with this fabric. I already applied gum stay to it. You see, I'm going to make sure that the circumference of this tie. Is the same as the circumference of this other fabric that I had at gum stay. So I'm going to sew it around. This is what I have. I already sewn the side to be the same as the circumference of the tie, and I've attached it to to the to my short. You see the way I attached it. I turned my short to the back side. That's the wrong side. I'm going to turn my fabric back to the right side. <laughs> then I'll carefully align the gum stay side on it this way yeah that way if you're using a gum stay make sure you use a softer gum stay you can see this one gave me a tough time because it's, it was too hard 
So make sure you use a softer gun stay. Now this is what I'm going to. I'm going to blend the hem of the gun stay on this material, on the sewn area. I'm going to blend it on the sewn area, making sure that the sewn area is inside. Then I'm going to sew it around. Just watch. That's the tip. I'm going to bend it that way. Then sew it around. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this to this to the both tie. You see, it's already done. You see, it's beautiful, right? I added that to make my shorts a bit longer so it won't be like a pant. But if you want yours to be like a pant, you don't need to add extra extra uh, material to it. Just bend the tip of the tie. So I'm going to put this on now so you see how it looks on me. Wow, woo. it's beautiful, right? I know you like it. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And you can also give me a thumbs up for this video and leave a comment. If you have any questions to ask, leave a comment. I'll be glad to reply. Thank you.